So we have spent the last week playing pretty much everything that EGX had to offer. Yeah, like it's a tough job, but somebody has to do it. <laughs> we even ended up with a pretty bad case of controller claw. Oh. But it was all for a good cause because we were choosing the winners of... These. <laughs> so these were our um, Baby Grenade Best of EGX 2017 awards. Um, and we had a really, really, really tough time choosing. Mm, so many good games. Yeah, I know people always say that, but seriously, everything yeah. was amazing at EGX. We played a ton of brilliant stuff, but there could only be six winners, so in no particular order, here they are. Hi, I'm Nick Macon of Making Games, and the uh, lead programmer on Raging Justice. So tell us a little bit about it. So Raging Justice is a, a retro-inspired, nostalgic, take on the, the kind of forgotten genre of the side-scrolling beat-em-up. We're trying to uh, bring back this old genre, but with a modern twist to make it feel fresh, make it feel new, but yeah, have that really nostalgic feel. What were the challenges of making a modern game but keeping that retro feel and aesthetic? I mean, the, the, the biggest challenge we had was probably, for us, was time and effort and iteration. It, another thing that we, we kind of tried to avoid on some levels was to do direct comparisons to the, some of the old games that we love. We still love those games, we still play those games, but I've tried not to kind of play one and specifically rip things out of that game, but we've tried to do it kind of on feeling, on our gut, on our memories of these games. Another one we played today was Yoku's Island Express. Oh yes, yeah. Which was like a pinball style collectathon, sort of like yeah. uh, Donkey Kong or yeah. Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, that sort of it, kind feel. Of, it felt a, a little bit like um, like Loco Roco y to me as well. That kind oh, of like yeah, really definitely. whimsical, like rolling around, like less cartoony but still really really fun really yeah. just adorable and a great soundtrack as well yes yeah and just the pinball thing really kind of unique if you love pinball yeah, exactly. i know loads of gamers love pinball machines i am definitely one of them well everyone um, still talks about the uh the old microsoft pinball game yeah. so, <laughs> so exactly if you yeah if you love microsoft pinball and, like, this game is for game. you <laughs> So uh, I'm Jonathan, I'm a lead designer at Cortink. Um, we're Sean Augment and Empire here today, which is uh, our tactical RPG with a kind of heavy narrative like woven in between, um, kind of with XCOM combat interspersed with different bubbles of like exploration and uh, narrative there. So tell us a little bit about what it's been like to work in VR. Uh, so VR is very, it's very interesting, it's still very early on. Typically you always have the first person experience. And I mean, Augmented Empire still is that, but you're navigating units, so you've got these characters that you'll meet and you'll learn and you'll go on this journey with them across New Savannah, instead of just being the character, so you're the first person camera in the game. So this game came out earlier this year, what's the reception been like? Uh, it's been really positive, uh, a lot of people are always amazed that it's on a mobile phone, uh, which is always good, but yeah, people seem to like really like the art style, because like, you see a contrast with stuff we did in the past, uh, but it also gives the, it brings New Savannah to life by giving you like, kind of the diversity of different areas of the city you go to, so you can go from slums to upper class areas, and it kind of shows that level of equality throughout the city as well. Ian Roach, I'm the Managing Director at Puny Astronaut, and this is Sky. So tell me a little bit about the game. So in Sky you play as a friendly flying dragon called Sky. It's a very gentle, relaxing experience. Um, so it's main, uh, mainly at kids, but we've had adults of every age playing it as well. The idea is that as soon as you start playing it, your heart rate is going to lower, you can sink right into it. So it's very low stakes. Um, so you're exploring a countryside environment, um, and as well as helping out the denizens of the world with their problems, you can also just spend your time flying around the world, relaxing, exploring. So if you want to spend 20 minutes um, diving down into a well and seeing what's there for you, or getting stuck in a big glass bottle, then you're free to do that. And if you want to go and help everyone as quickly as you can, you can do that as well. So it's very much like play it at your own pace, at your leisure, um, and you get the experience from it that you want. So one of the games I really loved this year at EGX was Falling Sky. Oh yeah, okay, so this was in the uh, National Film and Television School section. Um, yeah. and this By a really talented guy, Jonathan yeah. Nielsen. This one guy just made basically the entire thing himself. Yeah. Um, it was 
beautiful. So beautiful. That really uh, narrative driven yeah. game yeah. where you don't know what's going on yeah. and you need to help your younger brother through it. Um, it's like, it's, it's really emotional, yeah, it's really yeah. thought provoking and yeah, really beautiful. Yeah, it really reminded me of kind of two games in particular. So in terms of the storyline, um, I would say it was really similar to Gone Home in that kind of like, you've arrived somewhere, solve this deep kind of family mystery. Um, but in terms of how the game, you know, made me feel was uh, everybody's gone to the rapture. Mm -hmm. So kind of yeah, very, definitely. yeah, very similar kind of really emotive, really beautifully detailed, lots of um, attention paid to the environments that you go through. David Giorgio and James Thompson. This is Balance of Kingdoms. All right, so we love this game. We've just had a go on it. Um, it's kind of a two-person game. You've got to build kingdoms on two separate platforms and knock each other's over, um, and it's incredibly fun. We absolutely loved it. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how the game came about? Okay, so it was an accident, really. Yeah. So, I mean, I was making two projects uh, last year uh, alongside each other. The first one was like Tetris on a balancing beam, but with like random shapes. And the other one I wanted to do like an RTS, like strong or something. And they ended up merging together. It was like castles on a balancing beam. <laughs> so which one of you guys is the best at it? Uh, we've decided that we're all awful at it. And is the game released yet? Where can people find it? Okay, so it's not released yet. We're hoping to have early access in about six months. Yeah. That's estimate, a rough estimate. And the only place to get early access is on our Indiegogo. Yeah. And finally, how are you finding it at EGX? Oh, loving it. It's brilliant. I am exhausted. <laughs>